Hi everyone, my name is Robert Poole. I've been invited today to talk about the rationale behind the colour and thread count of the NASA Apollo 11 landing and moonwalk 50th anniversary term. But before I do that, I'd like to go back to when I first became interested in space travel and moon landings. I was about five years old when I saw my first movie at the New Star Cinema on Mary Hill Road in Glasgow. And over the years I've thought about it many times and there's no way I'd ever remember what it was called. I mean, what I remember for sure was uh, the spaceship taking off, landing on the moon, the astronauts walking the moon, the moon under attack, uh, and also like a dog and a couple of cats and a couple of monkeys. And that's really about it. Um, but seeing that, in fact, started me down the road of um, really having a love for science fiction as well as science fact. A short time ago I decided that I would try and track this movie down using Google search. Um, the initial search proved totally fruitless. I can assure you that putting in moon landings and monkeys and cats and dogs will get you absolutely nowhere. Um, so. I decided to work on what I, d I definitely knew. I knew that the film was before 1962 and the reason I know that was my father died in 1962 after a heart operation. So I knew it had to be before that, either 1961 or 60. Um, so I looked through all the science fiction movies for 1961 um, and nothing came up that would come close to it. Then I moved to 1960 and believe it or not I actually found the movie um, that I'd seen all those years ago. Uh, it was called 12 to the Moon and it was about 12 international astronauts um, on the first man moon landing and walk and the thing that amazed me more than anything was that this, this spaceship was actually called the Lunar Eagle 1 and the film was produced by Columbia Pictures which I just couldn't believe it. I thought what coincidence that is. Um, of course, nine years later I saw the old thing, you know, when uh, Bill Armstrong, Edwin Holden, you know, Michael Collins set off for the moon in the Apollo 11 mission. Well, the Evo landed in the moon and all of humanity took those first steps when Neil Armstrong, Buzz Holden, Phil Michael, you know, orbited the moon to Columbia. And to this day, I can still say it's the most exciting world event I've ever seen. And I guess the only thing that could match it would need to be to see a woman walk in Mars. I mean, I'd love to be that after party when that happened. Um, I'm getting on a wee bit in age, but uh, I'm quite sure my, my daughters Chanel, Danielle and Hazel, and my granddaughters Holly and Bonnie, and grandson Morgan, they'll be around to, to see it and appreciate it. And let me tell you, it's something you will never forget. I mean, anybody who was around at the time will know the feeling that you got when you first saw someone walking the moon. There's just no way to describe that. Well, like I say, you've got it all to come again when, you know, like I say, the day a woman walks in Mars. Um, that would be really good. Anyway, now back to the tartan. <coughs> Excuse me. I mean, a tartan should tell its own unique story you know, by the colour combination of the thread count it uses. And the six colours used um, on this particular tartan were brown, black, white, blue, red and grey. Uh, the red, white and blue uh, represent NASA's insignia and the uh, United States of America flag, while brown, black and white have equal thread counts of six, which represent part of NASA's core values of inclusion, diversity and equality for all those that work and represent NASA in every aspect of their business. Um, six is also representative of the population in the six continent combined model of Africa and Asia. Antarctica, Australia, Oceania, the Americas and Europe. And finally we have the 50 threads of grey, which of course represent the 50 years since humans first landed and took those first steps in the moon. I mean it was really about as simple as that. I mean there's nothing complex in the, in the overall design. Um, NASA made it really that easy for me to, to, to make those choices. And uh, I, I, I hope that you like them. Um, so that really just covers the rationale behind it. 
Um, I'd like to actually thank Jim Green, Greg Schmidt, uh, 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 sorry, Katrina, Gibbs, Yvonne Ibarra and Dave Williams for making this all possible. Um, I'd also like to thank Patricia Todd, the Scottish Register of Tartans for all her technical help over the years. Thanks for that. Um, sadly, I can't be at the venue today as I have an appointment in Glasgow that I just can't get out of. But I'm delighted to, to say that my daughter Chanel and grandchildren Morgan Holly will be there to present the official certificate issued by the Scottish Register of Tartans to the NASA representatives today. Um, I'll, now ho I'll now hand you back to Dr James Green and I hope you enjoy the rest of your evening and the rest of the year celebrating the 50th anniversary of the Apollo 11 landing and moonwalk. Thanks very much. Speech is all soon. Bye.